G'day. In this video, we're going to look at integrating expressions uh, of the form sine, cos or tan of a function. So, we'll start again looking at the derivative. It's always good to look at the derivative in order to understand what you're integrating. If we have sine of some function of x, the derivative of sine is cosine of whatever's inside multiplied by the derivative of what's inside. If we multiply both sides by dx, we get I'll put the dx here. I'm going to reverse these because I do like the function, the derivative at the front, times cos of fx dx. And if I integrate both sides, you can see I've done this over and over again in these videos, but if you learn the same pattern, if you forget a pattern, you can derive it very quickly during an exam. You don't have to go and look at a book. You just say, I think it's this kind of pattern. You can see it's trigonometric. Uh, so you can find the derivative, of, yeah, it's cos of some function, so you can find the derivative of cos of some function, the derivative of sine of some function, and see if it works. In this case, we're still progressive proceeding with this one. Uh, the integral of the derivative undo each other because, again, the integral is an antiderivative of the derivative. They're um, inverse functions. So we're left with sine of fx is the integral of f dash x times cos of fx dx. So this is a pattern. If we're integrating, this is a pattern we're on the lookout for. If we see a trig function with another function buried inside it, the first thing I hope you look for is to see whether the derivative is sitting outside. Because if you have the exact derivative of that function, this function sitting out here, this pattern is complete. It doesn't matter how complicated that is, if that's the exact derivative, then this is going to be the result. It's a very powerful pattern. Now, if you take the derivative of cosine of fx and the derivative of tan of fx, you get these patterns. Actually, I'll, I think it'd be worthwhile doing the derivation, so let's do this. d by dx of cos of fx, derivative of cos is minus sine, times the derivative of, it, of the function, multiply both sides by dx, so the dx will come up here, and I'm going to reverse these again, so integrating both sides, uh, you can have the minus sign inside or outside, I'll put it outside this time, these will disappear and we'll get cos of fx is minus this pattern. So notice because the derivative of the cosine is minus sine, we're going to have a minus sign here. Because that minus appeared when we took the derivative, it's going to be there as part of our pattern in the integral. And performing the same derivation for tangent, the derivative of tan of some function of x is going to be, the derivative of tan will be sec squared, whatever that function is, times the derivative of x, of the function of x. Again, we multiply both sides by dx. So the dx comes up here. And I'm going to reverse these. Sorry, sorry, sec squared of fx. We integrate both sides, 
the integral undoes the derivative again. So we get 10. I could have just left it written, couldn't I? I'll leave that there. And this is the pattern for the tangent. So just repeating what the others were. Sine of fx was derivative of cos and cos of fx was minus the derivative of f dash x times sine fx dx. It's good and instructive to see the three of these together. To see the pattern that you're looking for. These parts here are the derivatives of these parts here. So if you see sec squared inside an integral sign, it's possible that you're going to be able to integrate that into a tangent function. If you see cosine, you could possibly integrate it to a sine, and sine can integrate to a cosine. If there's a function inside, you need the derivative outside. And of course, in the case of this function, you need a minus sign. Let's use that information uh, to solve a few integrals, and I hope that seeing this in action will make more sense to you. But it's a very nice pattern. It's good to do all the three trig functions together. So here we go. Now these three integrals are very typical of the kind that you get in school tests in New South Wales for the, the what we call the mathematics course, the basic two-unit mathematics course. Uh, you can see that I've chosen one of each, a sec squared, a sine and a cos. And the thing to ask yourself is, since we're integrating a sec squared and we know that sec squared x is the derivative of tan x, are we going to get a tangent function? So what we look for is to see whether we have a pattern where the derivative of this is out the front. Now you can see in fact it's not. We have a 1 here and the derivative of 5x is in fact 5. So what we would do, I will in fact write it again rather than write over the top of it. We have the integral of 6 squared 5x dx. And what we need to do is to produce a 5 here, so that that is the derivative of that. And to compensate, we put 1 fifth out the front. And then integrating this 6 squared will give us tan. We'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. I'm looking at the patterns overall. This one, let's write it out again. Sine 2x minus pi dx. What is the derivative of 2x minus pi? It's 2, so we compensate with a half. Now, what do we differentiate to get sine? Well, we differentiate cos, but the derivative of cos is minus sine. So we'd actually like to have a minus sine here, and I'm going to put a minus out the front to compensate. So two minuses make a plus, makes no difference. But we've got to remember that it's the derivative of cos is minus sine, and that's why when we integrate minus sine, we're going to get cos. Here, I'm going to take the 2 out the front, because I don't particularly want it there at the moment. Cos x on 3 dx. And we ask ourselves, because it's following the pattern, what is the derivative of x on 3? The answer is 1 third. And we got to compensate by multiplying by 3. 3 times a third is 1. Multiplying by 1 won't change the result. Now what do we differentiate to get cosine? We differentiate sine x to get cosine of x. There is no minus sine involved, so that will integrate into a pure sine function. 
So now we've in red we've made all the adjustments necessary so that we have the derivative of this function out the front. Derivative of this here with the minus sign because we're going to get cos and the derivative of this is a third. So we just leave the constants out the front Three times two, of course, is six, and then this integral now is a is exactly in the form we want. We integrate six squared, and we get tan of whatever that function was. We integrate sine, and we get cosine of whatever the function was. Oh, two x minus pi. Sorry. We're integrating the cosine, so we get sine of whatever the function was. I really think it's important that you get to recognise patterns. Patterns are everything when integrating and differentiating. And, uh, and being able also to link up integrals with the prior derivatives. So in other words, starting with the derivative and working out your integration pattern is a good thing. So I encourage you to play with these again from your textbook or school workbook or from the internet or from whatever source you have. Try to practice quite a few of them. Uh, my own opinion really is to master it. You need to do at least 30 or 40 uh, in quick succession. And um, in terms of putting it in your long-term memory, that's what we would call your master practice. And uh, so that you don't forget it in the long term, Again, for your long-term memory, we have to engage in distributed practice, and that is uh, using your diary, try to schedule revision at increasingly long intervals of time, each time before you're likely to forget. So if you think you understand this after doing 30 or 40 questions, and you think you'll remember it probably for a, a month or six weeks or eight weeks before you're likely to forget, then schedule your diary to do some quick revision just at that point in time or just before it. The last thing you want to do is forget and have to relearn it all over again. And uh, I encourage you to do that. If you've enjoyed this, please like the video. Uh, please leave your comments again. Uh, I always enjoy reading them, even if they're um, challenging, shall we say. They're always constructive. And uh, your values are, your, your, sorry, your opinions are valuable to me. And also, uh, if you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe to this channel so you can learn about more videos that are coming. I thank you very much for watching.